Hello and welcome to PGTV News. Here are our top stories. Polk County public school students are on summer break. Find out who has stepped in to provide a vital service to these students. Polk County Fire Rescue has a new batch of paramedics coming into the workforce. We were on hand to view the graduation. Hello, welcome to PGTV News. I'm Trisha Pichette. And I am Tina Mann. Summer break for students has begun. And most of the 105,000 Polk County Public School students are used to receiving breakfast and lunch at school when school was in session. Summer Break Spot, a statewide initiative through the Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services, will provide free meals to children 18 years old and younger while school is out. Oscar J. Pope Elementary School is one of many locations where the summer meal program will be. Oscar J. Pope Elementary School principal Carol Griffin said, we're a community. We're here for our kids. I consider us to be a little school with a big heart. The United States Department of Agriculture's April 2019 School Nutrition and Meal Cost Study shows that the National School Lunch Program and School Breakfast Program provide 30 million federally subsidized lunches and 15 million federally subsidized breakfasts to children each school day. Last summer, more than 4,000 sites in Florida helped serve nearly 15 million meals to children. That's fantastic. It is fantastic, especially here in Polk County where there is unfortunately widespread homelessness and poverty. So making sure these kids get a healthy meal in the middle of the summer is very important. Recently, Polk State College's Center for Public Safety had its first graduation from its accelerated paramedic program. The graduates completed an eight and a half month course and are now paramedics. In my opinion, a new firefighter is one of the most important assets a fire department possesses. To me, a new firefighter represents the future and how much we can achieve as an organization. Our organization cannot expect long-term success if we do not recruit, develop, and retain talent. Every one of the individuals here today has successfully completed a very challenging paramedic school and have a lot in common. And the biggest attribute they share is the potential they possess. You would not be here today if we did not see your potential talent. The fact that you made it through this very tough year is a testament to your character and your willingness to be your best. Before I was a professional horse trainer, I worked for Almara Arabians, which is the um, largest privately owned herd in the U.S., um, based out of Claremont, Florida. Uh, I did that for about four or five years. Um, I had a close personal friend who worked on a heavy truck out in Gainesville, and he just, you know, just how he led his everyday life, his morals, you know, how much he loved going to work every day just really inspired me to look into it, and it just was something that really captured my attention. I know for me personally, my journey was a long one, and when I got here, I was very, very happy to get here because it felt right, it felt to me, it felt good to me. The, um, the personal um, feeling that I get from helping somebody is something that does really well. It makes sense for my personality. And I knew right away that Camille is the one you're referring to, that she did some horse training, she did some work in that area. But I can see from her initial interview, she was bright-eyed, she was excited about being able to perform the, the service that we talked about. So for me, it was a no-brainer. Uh, Camille was going to be a great student, she was going to be a great contributor, and she'll be a great firefighter paramedic for us for a long time. So yeah. It's, we come from a lot of different backgrounds, but what's common in us all is that we all like to help, we all like to serve, and I saw it early in her, so I'm very proud of her. You know, it's, um, I take it as a privilege to be able to be a part of this county, um, to, you know, take that spot and make it so one of the guys, one of my fellow, you know, officers can go home and um, be able to see their family and, and take that much needed mental break. We do have an urgency with filling our ranks here. We've identified it and we're, we're concentrating all of our efforts on making sure we fill our vacancies and the community can count on us when, when, we, uh, when we're called upon to be there and we're not asking too much for our current employees. So the fact that we have an infusion of brand new talent, and I can't say that with any happier, with brand new talent to our organization is very exciting and they're needed. It's not that they're gonna be extra, they're gonna be asked to perform at a high level almost immediately. And so uh, we can't wait for, for 100 of those folks to show up with the contribution I know they're gonna make, so yeah. It, is a, it will be a welcome addition to our family. We set up the bar pretty high for the, for the people that graduated today and graced this stage with today. So we set the bar high. We let them know we we're gonna set the bar high and they performed exceptionally. So I'm very proud of them. I look forward to their careers and the things that they're gonna accomplish. You know, what I try to remind them of, today's the first step. 
and I'm very proud of what you did here today, but I'm also very, very excited about the, what the future holds and how our community can look forward to the service that they're going to provide. So the fact that they took care of an eight-month program and all, actually only a year is, says something about the, the character of each individual here tonight, and I'm actually very, very proud and very, very happy of each of them. Well, there's a shortage in Polk County of um, both firemen and paramedics, so it, it's nice to know that we have more on the way. Absolutely. Congrats to the graduates. Center State Bank donated $30,000 to Faith Extreme, a nonprofit in Winter Haven. Faith Extreme's program, The Refuge, provides a safe and uplifting environment for children according to a company statement. The Refuge will use the money to provide nutritious meals for children while they are attending refuge clubhouses in Inwood and Eloise. The Refuge trains teenagers in several community service activities such as planning birthday parties for kids in crisis, assisting in home cleanup for those not able to manage those tasks themselves, and spreading Christmas cheer to the elderly and needy families. That's wonderful. That is wonderful. I mean, in a society where we're me, 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 it's awesome that we're teaching teenagers to give back. Absolutely. Lakeland commissioners improved donating 912 and 920 North Vermont Avenue to Talbot House Ministries. Talbot House is a nonprofit provider of housing and services for the poor and homeless. According to CRA Director Alice Drumgo, Talbot House Executive Director Brenda Redout approached Lakeland Community Development Agency in March, expressing an interest in converting the property to affordable housing units. In 2018, the city of Lakeland foreclosed on the properties after numerous code violations for illegal dumping and criminal activity. Under the agreement, Talbot House must raise or secure $600,000 needed for renovations to the property by November 30th, or the land will come back under the city ownership. That's awesome. Sounds like a lofty goal, but hopefully they'll be able to do it. Well, we're short of affordable housing in, in Lakeland, so that's, that's fantastic. Absolutely. Polk County's Helping Hands Jail Transition Program has been around for one year and has already received recognition from the National Association of Counties. The Achievement Award honors innovative and effective county government programs that strengthen services for residents. Polk County Helping Hands program started after the late Dr. Thomas McMicken, a member of the Sheriff Advisory Council, approached Sheriff Grady Judd about helping the mentally ill keep taking their medications after they leave jail. The National Association of Counties recognized Helping Hands as best in the category of criminal justice and public safety. Helping Hands uses community paramedics alongside recovery peer specialists to assist inmates with community reentry. Polk County Sheriff Grady Judd said he is grateful for Dr. McMicken's mission and helping hands because we are making a positive difference in this community. Well, it's, it's nice to be honored for good work, and what they're doing is without a doubt good work. Absolutely, it definitely is. The City of Lakeland Wastewater Collection Division has closed the intersection of East Lime Street and South Tennessee Avenue in order to repair a broken sewer pipe. This is a 24-hour-a-day closure, which will remain closed until crews can complete the repair work. Bill Anderson, director of Water Utilities, said the pipe being repaired was originally installed in 1929, and the break seems to be related to the age degradation of the pipe. We are in the process of rehabilitating the sewer pipe in order to extend its useful life another 50 years, he added and that the brake must be fixed in order to be able to rehabilitate the pipe. Well, Polk County has some of the oldest roads in the state, and unfortunately, old roads come with repairs to make them better. Yeah, but we're on it. We are on it. We're gonna get it done. The City of Lakeland Wastewater Collection Division will replace a failing manhole located at the intersection of Sand Gully Road and Windsor Street. The manhole structure has degraded and could eventually collapse, so crews are ex expediting the replacement process. The intersection of Sand Gully Road and Windsor Street will remain closed during the project. The roads approaching the intersection will be closed to through traffic, but there will be local traffic access. A sanitary sewer bypass will be set up to maintain the flow of wastewater while the project is underway. Sean Russ, wastewater engineer technician, said this manhole replacement is on a major trunk line that flows approximately 3 million gallons of wastewater per day. The sheer size and capacity of what is being replaced is the major cause for the duration of the closure. 
Wow, that's a lot of wastewater. It is a lot of wastewater, but again, necessary repair. Yep. The Haines City Police Department has a new toy. It's a drone. In the past, Haines City Police have had to rely on the use of the Polk County Sheriff's Office drones while area, whenever aerial response was necessary. Haines City Police Department Police Chief Jim Ellingsky said that having a drone readily available will help us to better serve our residents and perhaps even save lives. The Haines City Police Department believes that having the drone will allow the department to do good while keeping residents and officers safe. The drone is equipped with a thermal sensor, a spotlight to help for vision in low light areas, infrared technology, GPS time stamping, and a 4K camera. It also has a public address system which could be used for crisis intervention. Drones are more cost effective than helicopters and can also handle better in adverse weather conditions. I think that's terrific. How awesome is that? Hey, if you send a drone into some place that's got like armed people there, it's, it's great for law enforcement to know that that's the case. And isn't it amazing how much technology has just changed? Like, and when they first came out, they had like, awful cameras and now they can produce like high quality images. Yeah. Very cool. Not so cool. Public Supermarkets is recalling all ground beef and pork products produced at the store in the Lake Gibson Shopping Center on June 1st, 2019. These products may have foreign materials such as plastic or metal in them. The ground beef and pork products involved in the recall will have a sell by date of June 3rd, 2019. This only pertains to products ground in the store, such as ground beef, ground pork, meatloaf, meatballs, and ready-to-cook meals containing ground meat and sold in the meat case. Customers are encouraged to return this product to the store for a full refund. Consumers who have additional questions or concerns should contact Publix Customer Care at 1-800-242-1227. I think that's terrific though. Publix erring on the side of caution have instituted their own recall. That's great. Yep. Well, that wraps up the show. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to tune in again next week for another installment of PGTV News. We'll see you next time. human family in their natural habitat, known to their species as the backyard. Oh, you think I should light it now? I think it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh dear, someone is about to burn a pile of debris that's too tall, which can start a wildfire. Wait, what? could it be? Blimey, oh, it is. It's Smokey. It's Smokey Bear. What a legend. What's the hey, it's here? Smokey. Sorry, it was too high. Right. Watch as he astutely ensures that there's no wind and how he removes some of the debris to create a smaller, safer burning pile. No, you, see, no, you can't make it bigger, baby. The bigger, the better. Take note right. of our fearless okay. furry friend here, yeah. humans. I appreciate it. Chris Bump. <laughs> Watching you. Smokey's done it again. Bye, Smokey. Only you can prevent wildfires. you help.
Visit aarp.org slash caregiving for information on how to provide even better care for the person who wants Marie, you have prediabetes. Prediabetes? I don't have time to eat right or exercise. I'm a busy mom. Oh, you're a busy mom. Yeah. This is great news. Busy moms never get prediabetes. Wait, what? Let me just... Yeah, this is all the people at risk for prediabetes, and way over here, busy moms.